My name is Malcolm Shuttleworth. I'm a wilderness explorer, adventurer, and filmmaker on a lifelong journey to explore some of the wildest and most spectacular places in the world. All with the ultimate goal to uncover some of the many mysteries that still remain in the vast forests, mountains, and oceans of our planet. This time, I'm embarking on an adventure in the White Mountain Range in the state of New Hampshire to summit the largest mountain in the northeast of America, the massive Mount Washington, towering at just over 6,000 feet. So prepare yourself for the adventure ahead and let's go. Well, good morning, everyone. Malcolm back again from Majestic Skies. Today I'm in the White Mountain Range, going to be climbing Mount Washington today in New Hampshire. So uh, it's gonna be probably the largest hike I've ever done. It's about a 14, 1500 uh, meter gain, 4,000 feet or so. Pretty massive hike. And it's actually the windiest place in the world, arguably because the highest wind speed ever recorded was at the top of this mountain. All right, I'm now on the main trail that will eventually lead me to the top of this mountain. Now there's a few different routes you can take to get to the top of this mountain. We're gonna go for kind of a medium, intermediate level hike. There's one I really wanted to do that is essentially you're climbing straight up a cliff, but I decided to uh, skip on that one because when I was talking to the gentleman at the visitor center, he was saying that people have died on that trail falling off the cliff. So <laughs> might be a little bit, uh, a little bit above my level. I'm just looking for a nice, beautiful hike today. So my ambitious plan for this hike today is I'm starting right over here. Plan is I'll go up here and kind of cross over here and I'll get on Lion's Head Trail. And that, that trail will take me eventually up into the Alpine area here where I will continue onward up to the summit. And from there, my plan is to basically go back here, so part way back where I started, and then cross over here to this side. And then I'll just kind of follow this trail all the way back down into the valley. Now, just a friendly reminder, if you do enjoy my videos, do make sure to subscribe to my channel. I'm gonna get serious here. I did actually just lose my job, which is the only reason I'm out able to do this hike today. So if you could just subscribe to my channel, it does really help me out. Absolutely incredible waterfalls to start off this big hike. I honestly wasn't expecting them to be that massive, but definitely a nice little surprise there. First big viewpoint here. Nice view of the mountain I'm climbing. Right now I'm about out 900 meters probably. Maybe a little less, but got another thousand meters to go up to the top. Fork in the road here. Lion's Head this way, Tucker Ravine this way. I'm gonna take the road less traveled and take Lion's Head. And uh, we'll see, views might not be quite as good on the way up, but it should be a little bit quieter. There are quite a few people on the other trails, so it should be nice and peaceful out here. And now is when the really steep climb comes for me. Tucker Ravine, Tuckerman Ravine rather. It takes a little bit longer for the big climb, but this one, Definitely a lot steeper. Probably why they do not recommend it, but I know I can handle it. Wow, crazy how high I've already climbed. We're already almost at the top of that ski hill over there. I think it's called Wildcat Mountain. We're almost at the same altitude as that already. But this mountain goes a fair bit higher than that, so we've got a ways to go. Very steep stairway. Oh, I 
smokes. It's a big climb. Definitely getting up into the higher altitudes now. Still a ways to go, but we are getting up there and uh, the views are just breathtaking up here. Very calm morning though, so I'm going to take advantage of it and hopefully get to the summit as soon as possible while conditions are good. Holy smokes. Yeah, this is where it turns into alpine country here. <laughs> just taking a super brief break here. But uh, you can see the top now. That's the top of Mount Washington right there. So I'm probably a little over two thirds of the way there. It's only been about two hours of hiking, so I'm making good time here. Like I said, definitely into the high alpine country now. Just beautiful up here though. Surprisingly calm for today. We'll see, maybe the wind's coming from the top of the mountain, but we shall see. But uh, my plan is I'm going to make it up there to Mount Washington. And then there's another trail that winds, not right there, because obviously that's blocking the view, but winds along that cliff face. So we're gonna take that trail that winds along that cliff face right back down into the valley. So it should be a pretty interesting loop that we're doing. Originally, that was the trail over there I was planning on doing, um, I believe. It's hard to tell with this uh, cliff face in the way, but um, yeah, like I said, apparently people have died trying to do that trail, so. This is difficult enough for me as is. I don't feel like dying today, so yeah, this is a, a good challenge for me. All right, no time to waste. Let's get back at it. Next stop, top of Mount Washington. Just a grueling climb to the top here. Actually being able to see the top I think makes it worse, but I'm getting there. Seems to be getting a little bit less steep as I go up, so that's good. Should be a little bit easier on my legs. Top of Lion's Head here. Absolutely incredible view. High altitude waterfall you can see there. Where that water's coming from, but pretty incredible either way. Extreme exposure here, top of Lion's Head. Absolutely jaw dropping views. All right, on to the final push. Final push to the top. Probably another 300 meters to go. I'm getting there. So this is the last main trail intersection. This is where a lot of the other hikers were coming up. It goes along that waterfall, so understandable that way they went that way. The one good thing about going that way is of course you have a water source right before you push to the summit, which I'm running. I, I got maybe half a liter of water left, so I'm okay, but I am running a little bit low. All right, we're definitely making the final ascent now. Very easy to lose track of the trail here. Really your only indication is these rocks stacked up, as well as the, the snowshoe marks on the rocks. See them there from people doing this hike during the winter. But other than that, pretty easy to lose the trailhead here. As I kind of thought it would be, it does get pretty steep at the end here as well. Can't see the top anymore, so that means I'm climbing it. Oh man, I'm not gonna lie, I'm getting pretty tired here. But another converging trail that leads up to the summit, and I believe that's the trail I'll be taking that winds around that cliff face. Here we go, final push to the top. Oh yeah, this is it. You know, you've made it when you see a car. <laughs> there 
we go. Just about there. So you can see my setup for cooking is quite simple. It's a super compact, foldable propane stove. I actually have to adapt it to propane. They do sell smaller canisters for this that it's designed for, but I prefer the uh, small propane tanks. They just tend to work a lot better. Okay, now she's done. So good. I'll be honest, I haven't eaten anything for breakfast. So this is the first thing I've eaten all day. Didn't eat much last night either, because I knew it was gonna make me feel sick for the hike, but now I get to enjoy my nice lunch here. I'm gonna explore around this super touristy summit here, but uh, yeah, overall it was definitely worth it. Beautiful views at the top. I'll see some of kind of the local attractions here at the top of this mountain and uh, start hiking back down. And there it is, proof that the highest wind ever observed by man was recorded right here, 231 miles per hour. Crazy little patch of snow up here. So apparently on a clear day, like today, you can see all the way to Canada from up here, which would be kind of off in that direction, would be the closest spot at the border. Crazy. And apparently... Alright, well I've spent a good amount of time on the summit now. Got a nice rest. I'm feeling surprisingly good considering the hike I just did. So, yeah, now it's time to get back on the trail. Taking Tuckerman Ravine back down onto that crest of the mountain range there. And then we'll be going that way back down into the valley. And it's crazy just how much higher it is than uh, Wildcat Mountain over there, the ski hill. I mean, we are almost twice the height it feels like, but. This is one of my favorite spots of the hike, as far as the view you get. So I'm making good progress, as you can see. I've already descended quite a ways. But I'm hoping this trail should be, will be, a lot better than uh, Lion's Head or Tucker Ravine, which was very rocky basically the entire way. Very few sections where it was uh, super smooth, but. This area here, it does look like it turns into kind of a nice smooth trail for, at least for a ways, so 
we shall see on that. All right, this is nice to see. Nice mellow section of the trail, finally. Not that the descent is that difficult, but it is nice to not be fighting with the trail every two seconds, trying not to wipe out. What I'm most amazed by with this hiking trail is that there's water way up here. I don't know if that's because of the base over there, they pump water up or something, but it just doesn't seem like there should be water up in this high alpine territory, but... Crossroads here for the Bot Spur Trail, which is where I'm heading. And we're not going further up there, we're going along this ridge line. It is just eerily calm up here. I'm very glad I took this trail because it is pretty incredible up here. You get a great view of Mount Washington. Really gives you an idea of scale here when you see all the way down into the valley there. Well, here I am, top of Bot Spur now, so this is the second big summit. That's where the U.S. Geological Survey icon was. It's a little marker that tells you you're on the summit, so... Yeah, it is quite a beautiful trail to descend from, I will admit. I think this was a good choice. Another fork in the trail here. So I can either go down here, which will take me right into the valley right away. But I'm enjoying these views so much, I'm going to keep winding along, uh, along the mountains here. Okay, I'm officially crossing out of alpine country, as you can see here. Got a little bit more alpine right down there, but after that, should be seeing a lot more trees. Well, I'd say it was worth taking this trail just for this one view. Wow. Unbelievably beautiful. Now crossing the threshold out of the alpine area. As you can tell, I am descending down into the trees. Definitely still some difficult sections along this trail, as you can see. A bit of a tricky little climb down here. But it's manageable. Because these rocks are too angled. There we go. That's probably a good. 20 feet. Definitely some pretty clear tracks here. I'd say that's probably deer, but that's a little questionable. That could be a bear there. Don't know if this is the bottom, but it certainly does flatten out quite substantially here. Let me see. Did I make it down this gigantic mountain? Definitely getting down into the lower altitude now. Looks like I got about half a mile left of the trailhead, so yeah, that's pretty much it. Safe to say that I'm just too exhausted to keep recording here. So I, I do thank you very much for watching the video. Do make sure to like, comment, and subscribe if you enjoyed this content. And uh, stay tuned because there's going to be a lot more exciting hiking videos, adventure videos, travel videos coming soon. Perfect timing. Just as the sun's setting beneath the mountains. Unbelievable hike.